Mauritius, a land of diverse identities, multicultural tendencies, and historical roots that flow out of the island country to far-off nations. Hi, I'm Sundar. Today I'm going to talk to you about India's rich diasporic history in relation to Mauritius. Located to the east of Africa, Mauritius is part of the Mascarene Islands in the Indian Ocean. It's about 3,165 miles to the southwest of India. Its terrain is characterized with discontinuous mountains encircling a central plateau. It has considerable arable lands and aquatic resources. The climate is maritime subtropical with fairly uniform temperatures throughout the year. With a population of 1.3 million and a GDP of $25.9 billion, Mauritius has undergone a remarkable economic transformation from a low-income, agriculturally-based economy to a diversified, upper-middle-income country that has attracted considerable foreign investment and has one of Africa's highest per capita GDPs. Mauritius is a parliamentary democratic republic with a constitution of its own. The president is the figurative head, while political power and accountability lies with the prime minister. The Mauritian population is highly diverse in nature, comprising of people of Indian origin, Creoles, Catholics of African descent, Sino-Mauritians, and Franco-Mauritians. Over two-thirds of the population is of Indian origin. Prior to colonization, it was largely uninhabited and devoid of an indigenous population. Mauritius got its name from the Prince Maurice of Nassau in 1598 from the Dutch. However, it became a French colony and stayed so till 1715, that turned it into a plantation settlement and a major trading centre on the Indian Ocean. The British conquered the territory post the fall of Napoleonic France in 1810. They successfully created a sugar plantation industry on the island, which was to serve the empire for decades to come. The British let the French settlers retain their culture and property rights within the island. Therefore, the French language remained a part of the Mauritian culture even after the British conquest. With the abolition of slavery by Great Britain in 1835, the colonial colossus needed new hands for their survival and growth in new countries like Mauritius. This led to the commencement of the second wave of indentured labourers or Girmithias, largely brought from Bihar and UP in North India. Many died on the voyage to Mauritius, having never experienced the hardships of seafare and succumbing to pathetic conditions they were brought in. The peak years of immigration were 1843, 1859, and 1865. In 1910, when indentured labour was finally abolished, approximately 450,000 people had migrated from India to Mauritius. Although the bulk of Indian immigrants to the colonies were field labourers, small proportions were artisans, traders, and even Hindu pundits. Indian indentured labour was state-regulated. Before leaving India, labourers were made to sign an agreement or a girmit for the same. In 